Hi there. So it's a beautiful spring morning here in Austin, Texas. I thought it'd be a great morning to uh, do a video of an overview of Autodesk QTO. <laughs> so uh, while the sun is shining, let me just kind of take you through the basics of uh, using QTO. This is not going to be any specific takeoff. It's just more about how QTO works. Okay, the main area where you view your drawing is called the canvas, and uh, it, it'll open up any kind of uh, file that you have in your document list and show it to you here. Now, what you're probably used to seeing, though, are all these tabs and palettes off to the side. These, you can hover over them to pop them out, and when you go off of them, they go away. Um, if you like that, you can leave it that way. You can also use the little pin here to pin it, and that'll keep it open. So now you notice it didn't go away. You can also resize these just by grabbing here and stretching, and you can, when they're pinned, you can drag them off. And then you can put them, you know, out places. These little guys here will show you different places you can drop them, okay? Or you can, they don't have to live inside the canvas window. You can't see that, but I just moved it out, um, outside. So you could put it on another screen if you want, or you could choose to dock it somewhere else. If you're looking for something that isn't here, uh, it's probably here, because this is where the list of all the palettes are. So I want to turn on my workbook. So there we go. And maybe I know I'm not going to do any 3D takeoffs. So I'm going to take out model, and I'm going to take out um, what else? I don't know properties. So if you want to turn things off, you can do that. If you want to reset the the layout to to default, you can go here, and it'll it'll set everything back up the way it defaults when you open QTO. Okay, so let's just run through. So there's so canvas, uh, palettes, and then workbook, and uh, we're going to go into the workbook in some detail, but. In here, you can see all of my documents, and I can organize them into folders by using these little buttons here. So if I wanted to create floor plans, whatever, wherever I am when I click this is what level the folder gets created at. So that's important. If you want to create a new folder underneath this one, click on it, then set it. If you want to create a new folder at the top level, create it there, top level folder. So you know, wherever you click is where the folder is going to get created. You can drag and drop things too. So if you want to drag and drop that folder in there, you can see that it went in. And then if I want to put all my floor plans in, I can hold down shift and select them all. And I can just drag them into that folder and they'll go in there. And I can take everything else and move it into here. So if you want to further organize your plan set that you're estimating off of with folders, it's easy to do that. And you can drag things out and remove folders and delete them and that kind of thing. Uh, you can create a new folder off the right-click menu. You can copy them, uh, delete them, rename them. You can set options whether you want to see a list view or thumbnails. Uh, this I don't see people use too much, but if you wanted to use thumbnails, you could do that and see those also. So sometimes that's the easiest way to jump around. Um, okay, so there's your documents view. Um, here's a little filter. This shows you the same kind of options that you have, but it also allows you to go out and get more. Uh, documents. You can also compare from here. You can delete sheets from here. Um, you can view by additions and deletions. That's part of compare. And then properties uh, shows you the properties of that folder. A little detailed there. but Okay, so that's where you manage your documents. And whatever you click here is what you're looking at over here. You only have to single click. Okay. There's also something in here that's handy, which is this legend um, view or this legend column. If I click on the legend, it will put the takeoff legend onto the sheet. And what I mean by that is if I go in here and I do a takeoff real quick, there's some goofy takeoff. Now, if we look back, you see, you can't really see it, but that right there is my legend. So now I can take that legend and move it off over here. And it's just a real quick way to show people what, you know, how you got your takeoff. Let's do another one. Okay, now it just added them together. And then if I wanted to take them apart and put them in different groups, I could make a new group called um, Area 2, for example, and move that in there. And now I'll have two different, oh, i got to make an item, Area 2, there we go. Now we'll have two different colors. We're going to come back to palette. I'm not trying to show you how to do a takeoff right now. I'm just trying to show you how to, uh, how to measure. Oh, this has to be an area. There we go. Where that went. Okay. Bada bing, there we go. So area and area two. So that's what your legend does. It, it puts a legend of what you've counted onto the uh, onto the sheet. Okay, so that's the documents. You can see how many sheets you have in your set, 21. And if you want to import new ones, you can go out here and just say import, and you can go get other DWF files and bring those in.
Okay, next is the takeoff palette. This is the main working area where you create your takeoff structure. And again, we're not going to go too deep into how to create takeoff, but I want to show you uh, the basics. Um, this takes a little getting used to uh, at first, but you get better at it. I'm going to delete everything. So groups and items. A group is like a folder, and that could be something like drywall. And you might collect a lot of things up under drywall. And underneath drywall, you might have other groups like materials. Okay, so you can create, just keep clicking and you can create sub, sub, sub folders, or you can create them here. I should say subgroups. Okay, so group is like a, a folder. How, the reason you know it's a group is because it doesn't have a color next to it. If it has a little colored box, then it's an item that you can take off. If it doesn't, then it's a group. If I create one under here, now you notice it has that area there. So now it has, that, but I still need to, when I create, an, an area I need to tell it what the type of that area is because I that's a little confusing because it says area area but if I did this as like ceiling and I wanted to measure the ceilings of this building the ceiling I'm going to measure by looking over here and clicking and that's going to make it an area calculation so I would go area whereas if I did for example let's create another item I'm going to click on the takeoff so I'm going to click here walls walls I might count by tracing which means they're going to be linear Okay, so you can set the type of the takeoff right here by just hitting this pull down. And there's undefined, which is what it starts as. There's linear area, volume, and count. Count is for things like doors, windows, you know, things you have to count. It's also for if you have to use like rolls, like rolls of carpet might come in a certain length. You want to know how many rolls you need. Even though it's going to be derived from area, you probably want to use a count for that. Volume would be for like concrete, cubic yards. Uh, and then area would be anything that you measure an area of, like siding or brick or, uh, you know, concrete slab. Linear things that you trace linear length. Okay, so uh, that's that. And then you can also filter if you want to just see all your undefined things or just your defined things, meaning undefined is over here. If it said if this says undefined, then it will this filter will change it. I could see my catalog items, my project items, or I could see anything that has an assignment. And right now, nothing is taking off, so you're not going to see any of those. So I'm going to just turn those off. But if I had a catalog that I had brought in, I could filter it down to just show me the things that came from the original catalog, or just show me things that came from this project, or show me anything that has assignments to it. And then if I want to say custom, I can find anything that says the word ceiling. So if you have a big takeoff, it's nice to be able to filter it down to just seeing one little thing in your filter. Okay, and then here you can... Uh, create new items or groups. You can duplicate something if you want to make another copy to kind of work off of. You can delete it, of course. You can show everything or you can show objects. Not really sure exactly what that does, to be honest. That's probably one for the manual. Um, assign to an item. If you want to assign a, a, an object to an item, that's really for doing model takeoff. And then you can unassign. Um, export the catalog. Import the catalog. Uh, the, the catalog is essentially the the list of things that you want to test off of. So if I had a catalog in here, let me go into uh, QTO. Here's an example of a catalog. It's an ATT file. You can also use a CSV or a text file. And if I import that, it's going to, here's all the things that are in that catalog. And I can say, okay. And it's going to bring in, watch over here, it's going to bring in a whole bunch of takeoff items. So this is the way you could set up a, a default template and then reuse it. Tells me there's some duplicate colors. We'll say yeah, so we don't duplicate. So if you look there, there's now a whole bunch of template items here. And if if I wanted to, f let me unlock all of these. And if I wanted to filter by, uh, let's say drywall. Now I can. There's just my drywall. See. And then if I wanted to say, just show me uh, catalog items. Let me turn my other filter off. I think I just clear that to do. There we go. So there's everything. And now I can, well, actually, it doesn't look like everything. 1, 6, 8, 9, 11, and insulation. Oh, because I'm looking at catalog items. If I do, let me turn these off here. There's, that's not everything. That's just uh, easy. View all. I missed it right at the top there. So there's, there they all are. And now if I wanted to filter it, I could filter it down. So just show me the things from the catalog. And you notice the one that I created earlier went away. The, the, the one that I, this drywall one here. So 
the filter works pretty nice. I, I spent probably too much time on that, but anyway, you get the idea. This is just like anything else. You can pin it and have it go away if you want or not. Let's see. Okay, the next, the big area that you need, okay, the the, the, the workbook is the big area where you spend a lot of time, I, or I spend a lot of time. It has these tabs at the bottom that, that correlate to what you take off. So if we go in here, for example, and do, um, I'm going to go back into the one that I know. I'm going to do ceiling area. I'm going to grab this, and I'm just going to take off the ceiling area here like this. Okay, so now we've got a tab for drywall because I've started to take drywall off. So as you take things off in your takeoff palette, let's pin this back here. As you as you create takeoff, it shows up down here in the workbook, and then you get a tab for it. So this is kind of like a filter because you can you can easily filter things down. Let's do windows. I'm just going to do some fake counts here, just so we have some other stuff. And you notice my uh, my legend there is up is updating itself. I'm just tracing some counts. Let's move that legend out of the way. It can kind of be tricky sometimes to move the legend if it's over the top of something. Okay, so now we have windows and doors and drywall. And, our, and see, I can filter those to just show me the windows and doors or just show me the drywall. So this is another great way to, to filter it. The other thing is right up here, you have a workbook filter. And this will show you, just show me the things on this sheet or show me the things throughout the project. So if I had drywall take off or ceiling take off on multiple sheets, if I said project, it would show it to me everywhere. If I show just on this sheet, it's only going to show me what's on the sheet. So that's how you can change the view you're looking at. You can also change your row size if you like bigger text. Um, and you can print the workbook out from here. Um, areas, I'm going to I'm going to right click in here and I'm going to add an item. And let's add drywall to this. And let's get a 4x12 half inch drywall. Oh, let's get ceiling board. There we go. Okay, so we've just added an item to, to here and I, I want to I want to figure out how much of that material I need because here's my ceiling. Okay, the deal is you put your formula onto the item and it draws its values from the things above it. Area, if I do that, equals area, it goes, it just takes the area of the thing that it's part of. See how that is? Now, if I, these are 4 by 12, so I could divide by 48 because 12 times 4 is 48. And now I've got 34 each, so 34 sheets of drywall. That makes more sense. But we also have a waste factor. Let's say we have a waste factor of 1.05 or 5%. Now we've got 35 sheets. And if I don't want to see, see fractions, I can say round. And I can round the whole thing up. And now I know I have 36 sheets. It doesn't actually round it up. It rounds it, you know, uh, over halfway goes up and under halfway goes down. You may want to be careful with the round because if you're adding waste factors and everything, it can it can get out of hand. You can move the parentheses, but then you're going to back you're going to end back up with with decimals again. So you could do you could do this, and in this case, I don't think it's going to matter. But if you had if you wanted to round up the number of sheets and then take a 5% waste and then round that number up again, you could do that. It didn't make a difference in this in this case, but in some cases it might. Okay, so anything that I take off shows up in the workbook, it shows up in the takeoff palette. Very easy. The other thing is I can change the properties of my objects with the, these pull downs up here. So if I wanted to make them more opaque or less opaque, I could do that. I could change the color of them and so forth. Let's go back to the windows here there's my window uh, item and I'm gonna right click on this and say properties and we're gonna change the color to black and we're gonna change the symbol to a square and let's make them a little bigger now what you'll see is black squares and let's make them more opaque okay so when I set the property of this group it changes everything down below it um, and that's how you can mess around with the way it looks on your on your legend and on your sheet. Uh, what I've done here, if you notice this little back arrow is up, I can go into the item. So I, there's nine here. I can double click here and it takes me down a level kind of into the into that nine and it breaks the nine down for me. See one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I can go back up a level here. I can also change the value of that grouping there and it'll change it everywhere. Uh, I can put in comments, remarks, and you can change your the columns that you see. So if you want to, let me shrink this a bit. If you wanted to um, go, let's see, go. I'll, I think the keyboard's probably the easiest way to sh move around in here. The arrow keys. 
if I want to add other columns to this, I can do that. I can also drag them around. So if I wanted to add time out here and I wanted to add labor cost, so you can turn your columns on and off or depending on, and move them around just by dragging. And this will save with your project. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, so just moving around, you have the you have the standard roll the mouse to go in and out, or hold the mouse down to uh, to pan, and I mean hold the middle button down, roll the wheel, roll the wheel, and then hold the wheel and pan. If you're doing a a, a long takeoff like this and you need to move around, it'll auto zoom for you if you're in the, right in the right magic spot to get it to do it, or you can just hold down your shift your uh, space space bar, which will put you temporarily into pan mode. And if you let up on the space bar, you come out of pan mode. So that's a nice way to one hand on the mouse, one hand on the space bar kind of thing. Okay, so that, that would give you, you know, there's the thing I just traced around. So you can use the, the auto takeoff or you can use the, uh, the space bar to pan around while you're measured in or while you're zoomed in. You can also do stamps, you can do shapes, you can do call outs. If you want to call things out, why you did certain things on the plan, you can do that. Um, reporting is right here, so if you want to create a report of what you've done, you basically give it a name, you give it a, a type, you can do a summary report, you can do a group report, uh, or you can do a material report. Group will break it down by groups up here, and material will break it down by material type. So a material that shows up in five groups will only be one line here, whereas a, a group that has five items will be five. And you can do odd items and objects. Objects gives you the takeoff objects. You probably don't want to see those, but you might. Let's grab all of this. Then over here, you have to go in and say, what do you want to see in your report? We want to see quantity one. And then you can change labels and layout. And header. These three aren't as important. As long as you fix these two right here to what you want, you'll get a pretty good report most of the time. If it isn't clicked over here to be hidden, you won't see it. So if it's hidden over here, you won't see it in your report. That's kind of important. I'll show you what hidden means here in a second. There we go. So there's our groups. We've got our nine windows there, and we got our 1,600 feet of ceiling, and then we got our 36. So this just kind of exports a report in the same format that you had it in your takeoff, okay? Uh, hiding things, if I unclick it, let me go back to my, um, oh, a report, by the way, is a document. So if you look here, the report shows up as a document in your documents tree. So if you want to jump back to a takeoff, and you'll notice this little yellow arrow here in the corner, that tells you there's takeoff on that sheet. Okay, so I uncheck the Windows box, so the windows are gone. If I put them back by clicking here, they show up again. You can hide individual windows too, and that can be a nice way to find them. There is a way to find them in here by right-clicking and saying Show, okay, and it'll zoom you to it, right? But if you're just doing a quick, like, which one is this, you can just hide it and put it back, and that'll show you what you're looking at. So that, that window there obviously corresponds to that window. You can also move these around, although not highly recommended. If I put it out here, then... I don't really know what it went to, but but regardless, um, the little objects that you use for counting are pretty straightforward and easy to mess with. The other thing that I'll show you is the back out tool, which I find to be pretty handy. Let's go into the ceiling. If I wanted to back out the garage because it uses a different ceiling type or something, you could come in here and edit these and probably delete. Watch, I could just delete that. That's easy, right? But now i got to get this out of here. And this is one big square. So if I do this, it's going to shrink too much. I don't want it to shrink this. I only want it to shrink this. This is where your back out tool comes in. Just back out what you want. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to click on that. There we go. And, hey, it's trying to make a... Oh, I know why, because I'm in doing a polyline back out. I'm expecting to do a rectangle back out. There we go. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. And that'll erase it out for you. So it's also good for doing windows. You can back out windows that way on elevations. Or, you know, if I'm not going to put a ceiling in here, I could do this. And in this case, I would probably need to use the, the linear tool to get rid of that. Okay, so you can cut holes in your takeoff, and it'll adjust and everything. Okay, that's it. That's going to be our, uh, it for the QTO overview. I think if you've watched this through to this point, you probably have a pretty good idea of how to get started with your QTO, uh, your model, or your drawings. One more thing just really quick about projects. You only have one project open at a time, so I can save this or I can just create a new one, and a new project will, will prompt me to save, but then I have to go get new DWFs and everything. If you want to just bring more DWFs into your project, use import. I showed you that up here too. Import sheets and models, and that'll bring in another set of DWF files or what have you. Okay, thanks very much for watching.